Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 2, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing more on God's truth about the personal emotional processes relating to forgiving and repenting. The session was recorded on 5th of September 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So let's talk about what it feels like as God's laws operate to motivate my forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So what does it feel like as God's <laughs> laws operate upon me to motivate my forgiveness? Well, firstly, let's look at the law of attraction, which is a law that operates on me to help trigger me into having a desire to forgive. The law of attraction, because I now have this hurt within me, that's now governing all of my choices and decisions, I will attract through the law of attraction a whole series of events that expose to me these, this condition of my lack of forgiveness within me. Mm -hmm. now, now, the more I engage or more I act upon my unhealed or hurt emotions, the more intensely the feedback mechanism becomes. Yeah. It becomes so intense that almost my entire life is governed by these feedback, feedback mechanism. So, so now we have that first aspect, God's law of attraction operating to intensify this feeling inside of me that, uh, and so that I can recognize it and see that I need to release it. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yeah. That, that's a good thing. But most people just that very first step, most people think that's a terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> and they wonder why their life's getting more and more difficult, more difficult, more hard. Yep. And, and, uh, and their emotions are getting more difficult to hold back. And most people then put a stronger effort on holding back these emotions during that phase, which then causes them to take further actions that are damaging. And now that they'll have to repent for. Yeah. Right, rather than just engaging or, or the process of release that the law is intended to engage, just like it would for a child. Mm. So basically, the law of attraction is bringing us events to help us to enter this state of forgiveness. That starts to stir up the very emotions that we need to release in order to forgive. But most of us put a big... Uh, Barrier, spiky barrier, or up, resistance. Fight, fight internally, and usually start fighting externally towards the very events and people that we're attracting to tr trigger these emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, what does that do? That just creates stronger attractions of of a similar or more intense type, doesn't it? Yes, and usually also causes us to sin by yes. taking active uh, you know things to avoid these particular events mm -hmm. and that actually then engages a lot of things we need to repent for repent as well for. so now we're now, yeah. now we're doubling up the problem yes, uh, yes. we're not we're not releasing the original problem yeah. we're now compounding it with another problem yes and this is a the you know way that most adults address issues of forgiveness they compound the problem right yeah. rather than do what god's laws are trying to move them in the direction of doing yes mm. so often it's feeling so that feels pretty bad it's feeling it's feeling bad <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's going to feel bad emotionally but also it feels bad physically like there will be because mm. of the emotions you're now storing in your uh, storing in your soul it has an effect on the body and how the body fun mm. functions in different areas your body start closing down because you've closed down the flow of emotion that mm -hmm. governs those areas of the body so now not only are you experiencing things like emotional pain but now you're actually also usually in quite a lot of physical pain too and it affects our face as well and our and everything you get this scowl on our face and our <laughs> eyes narrow and, and like yeah, literally yeah, if yes, you look yeah. at people who have encountered a lot of hurt in their life and not released it very often that they, they if they're not actively angrily aggressive trying to fight um which most they, people are let's face it most people are yeah. but even if they're not they become very like it's a, a physical expression of what's happening internally a lack of trust and a, 
are closing off towards others, isn't there? So it and a general closing us. off to life. Yes. And, and the experience of life, life. A withdrawal yeah. from life. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So that's so, partly how it feels. And like you said, we attract more and more events. And these events are in proportion to the hurt as well. So, so if we've been really hurt as a child, often the events are quite powerful. Mm. And this makes us feel very uh, unfairly treated in many cases. We're going to talk about that. Because we, we start, yes. yeah, we'll talk about the unfair later. But the feeling is that, oh, this, this is a big thing now attracting it. Now, it's a big thing and it has to be a big thing because we're not allowing sensitivity. Mm -hmm. See, if we were sensitive, it just would require a tiny little thing mm. and we would just cry and release the emotion. Mm. But because we're choosing to not be sensitive, we now need a bigger thing and a bigger thing and a bigger thing to occur before we actually notice. It's the difference between somebody just going tap, tap, tap on your arm, yeah. trying to get your attention, or somebody coming along with a brick and throwing at you <laughs> to get your attention. You know, that, that's often the case. And because, because we're not sensitive to the law tapping us, we now are more resilient to the tap. We, we, we're more resistive to the tap. And so unfortunately now, that we've because of our own actions, the intensity must increase in order for us to take notice. So then... In our notes, we've got that it's proportional to the hurt that's within us. Mm -hmm. So big hurt creates big attraction. But from what you're saying there, it sounds though, though, if you're saying I could have a big hurt inside of me, but be quite sensitive, then I don't need a big attraction. Just a small attraction will help trigger the big hurt. So the big, the big attraction is, is not necessarily the result of the hurt. It's not the size of the hurt. It's the, it's size, the size of, of the our sensitivity or resistance. That causes yes. the big attractions. Yeah. And this is what we need to come to understand in the end. So that's really what it's proportional to. I can have a little hurt but end up with very, big very painful, uh, or big resistance creating very, very big... Events. Um, events yes or i could have a very big event that only requires like a small attraction a small gentle if, attraction if i've if i remain sensitive or if i've worked on my sensitivity or these yes. kinds of things yeah. now god always supplies the most gentlest all the laws supply mm -hmm. the most gentlest attraction yes uh, in, always yeah that given our condition of resistance yeah so if the, if the attraction is quite severe, then that's an indication that the level of resistance is quite severe. Yeah. Because all of God's laws only supply the enough, enough event to get over the resistance yes. to the emotion. So mm -hmm. that's a very important thing to understand with regard to forgiveness too, is that if we're, if we, we could have a little thing to forgive, but be very resistive to doing it, which is going to create large attractions mm. because of our level of resistance. Yeah. yeah, if I think about that on a global scale, I find it quite uh, so so sobering, I suppose, mm. given the level of uh, attractions that happen. And there's some very extreme attractions that occur for mm. a lot of people at the moment on the planet. There and are. And if, if I follow this logic, that means there's quite a lot of resistance. A huge amount of resistance yeah. on the planet to forgiveness and repentance yeah. at this stage. Yeah. And that's why the attractions are so intense. Yeah. If, the, if, a, if a person was like a, a child, like a very young child, who has very little resistance to their own emotional experience, um, most people on the planet would be crying, you'd see them crying every day, mm. probably for a fair portion of the day initially. Mm -hmm. Um, and they wouldn't be taking actions that further cause them problems. They wouldn't be taking actions for which they're going to have to in the future repent for. But unfortunately, most of us are very, very uh, afraid of mm. emotion mm -hmm. and particularly very afraid of what we classify as painful emotion. Mm. And, and unfortunately, because of this fear, that generates a high level of resistance and therefore now a high level of intense law of attraction events that we are attracting to trigger that level of resistance and get us beyond the point and into a place of, sens of sensitivity. Mm. And this reminds me, you've spoken about this at various times, uh, about how those of us who are sort of attempting to engage with God's way of, you know, dealing with attractions, releasing past hurt, where you've spoken about our 
condition can improve somewhat but then obviously if we're still in resistance and we're kind of putting up these attack kind of barriers against further hurt for feeling of further hurt uh, resisting sensitivity then we can actually do a lot of things that you say that we need to repent for and our condition degrades and then so it's quite a it's quite a up and down journey. Well, yes, uh, it's only up and down, of course, because we refuse. It's all to yes. do with refusal, disobedience, the desire to disobey. Mm. So God's one of God's laws about the soul is to obey the law of emotion, and mm. that is emotion needs to flow. Yeah. And so whenever we disobey that uh, that law, we are bound to have consequences which are painful. Mm -hmm. And those painful consequences can last a long time if we're not careful and we continue to engage that resistance to the law. And this is where it gets down. We, we have a tendency to resist the law and therefore attract more events and in proportional to the, to the new hurt now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the resistance mm -hmm. that I'm now causing myself. So this is something I have to repent for in the long run. And uh, and unfortunately, that is a, a you know part of the feelings that we have to go through yeah. to get to the point where we now no longer want to resist. Yes. Now we normally have a lot of help to do that. You know, there's people in the, well, obviously all of God's laws are trying to help us to be sensitive mm -hmm. for a start. But then there's people around us who love us and are kind. They're trying to help us see when you know we're not forgiven somebody, and are you sure you want to keep that kind of behaviour up and yeah. Uh, you haven't let go of this, you know, you, you're reminded by people who care about, you know, care about you and, and the spirits who care about you too. They, they will also be attempting to remind you. Your own conscience, as we'll talk about later, will remind you that you haven't you know, forgiven mm -hmm. a person for whatever they did wrong. And so there's a lot of things going on externally to help you get beyond these particular emotions or feelings. But most people don't listen to them, unfortunately, and yeah. and continue the same behaviour. That is the behaviour of resistance. Yes. Not wanting to be sensitive mm -hmm. to what's really going on. Not wanting to have an awareness or any sensitivity to the emotion. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, so mm. for the majority, we're, we're saying what it feels like as God's laws operate to motivate forgiveness. This is before we've got a motivation. So while, it, while this operation is happening, it's going to probably feel at the very least uncomfortable and yes. th there'll be pain involved because of course pain we're, is the we're in a resistive here. state yes anytime we're in a resistive state we have pain and mm -hmm. the pain is going to be across our entire life it's mm -hmm. not it's not just spiritual pain it's mm -hmm. emotional pain it's physical pain it's all the different kinds of pain we can exist and if we allow it go on for too long it turns into suffering where we're now suffering from diseases and other things that are the result of holding on to these specific emotions yeah. So yeah, there's a, and and usually in this phase we're 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 in this resistive turmoil. Yep. And we get so often embroiled in this resistive turmoil that we lose sight of why it's even occurring. Yeah. Even though there's um, God's angels, if you like, there's spirits in the spirit world who've been through this process who are trying to bring our attention to it. All of God's laws are trying to bring attention to it. Mm -hmm. And even yet, even still, we can still lose sight of why it's happening. And most people have no clue as to why it's happening, do they? No, no. And unfortunately, they die with no clue to why it's happening. And yeah. their death is caused even so by, by, the, re by the refusal to forgive or repent. Yeah. Your physical death is created by the emotions that are caused by these particular events. And and now you're in the spirit world in a place that matches your condition, mm -hmm. still attempting to mm. bring you to cognizance of the actual thing that's wrong, which is the refusal to feel, to the feel. lack of sensitivity to your true emotional state. Mm. 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 And often it takes people many years even then. Uh, and. And it's a bit different in the spirit world. You, you don't have the ability to, uh, when you're in this state, once you've exhausted your addictions, it's very, very hard to now even engage the addictions. You have uh, hardly any strength less to engage your addictions anymore. And, and that's what, what I call the hells of the spirit world. And the hells of the spirit world exist primarily to bring a person to a state of recognition that they need to either forgive or repent. Mm. 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 So for many, you know, they are in the hills still because they've chosen to not forgive. Mm. 
or they're in the hell still because they've chosen to not repent. Hmm. So while these laws are operating upon us then, and you mentioned when a person enters the spirit world, they're still operating upon them. Yes. Uh, exactly the same level of it's, laws. It's the same thing, isn't it? It is, but with a few changes, and that is you are now very sensitive to everything that's happening. Mm. The spirit body is much more sensitive than the physical body is to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So so now there's a keenly attuned sensitivity to the pain you're in, mm. and this often exacerbates your anger to it, your, your response. Your resistance. Your resistive, your resistance to it. And uh, unfortunately, that usually causes us to flare up once we arrive in the spirit world. We flare up in rage and anger more um, until we've gone through the, the feelings of resistance yep. and then gotten to the point where we're now allowing ourselves to be sensitive to what the real underlying emotion is that we need to feel, the hurt mm. that we experienced. Mm. Mm. And this difficulty with engaging our addictions... I mean, do you think that that can happen while we're on earth as well? Well, yes, where God's designed it that way, yeah. I can relate to that on many issues yeah. where it becomes increasingly difficult to engage with a certain addiction that I'm used to engaging in order to avoid. Yes, it either has one or two effects usually. Yeah. We, we attempt engaging the same addiction to avoid the emotion. Yeah. But after a while, the same addiction doesn't have the effect anymore. It's like it doesn't have the effect anymore of avoiding the emotion. Uh -huh. it, it doesn't do the job. That, yeah. And so then we often engage higher, higher levels of addictions. Or additional addictions. Or addiction yeah, additions. Yeah. And then eventually they run out of steam and they don't <laughs> do the job either. <laughs> and eventually in that process we learn that no matter what addictions we engage, it's not going to do the job. Yes. yes. The job is that we need to release the emotion and yeah. every addiction we engage just helps us avoid that. Mm -hmm. And in the end it's not very good at helping us avoid it either. So, so we get to the point where we become aware that, oh, what I'm doing here is just engaging a higher intensity of addiction or sin yeah. in order to avoid this underlying emotion yes. that I need to release and feel. And, and, and that helps us a lot then once we've recognised that. We, st we, start, we stop the process of engaging the addictions and choose to allow ourselves to become more sensitive to the emotion. Yes. So that's one thing it can do. Yeah. It can cause us to act more intensely. Yes. And engage a process of higher intensity of sin. Mm. Uh, but that is based upon our unwillingness. Yeah. Um, it, it only will happen if we're unwilling. Yeah. If we're willing, obviously it's very different. If we're willing, we see it very more rapidly, a lot more rapidly. We, we are then able to focus our desire on actually seeing its cause, which is the underlying emotion we're holding on to, mm. and choose to release that. Mm. So it just depends on so, the decisions we make. That's right. And God's laws are basically operating to attempt to show me the futility of addiction as well, aren't yes. they? Yeah. And so that can begin to happen, can't it, where you're engaging in addiction, you, this is pointless because I know yes. it's not actually leading to any sustained happiness and yes. there's this other thing that I keep avoiding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the question we're discussing is our feelings yes. about it. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously once you engage uh, repentance or forgiveness with desire, in this case we're talking about repent uh, forgiveness, yeah. once we engage it with desire, we can have very uh, some very beautiful experiences with this. Mm -hmm. uh, some very uh, experiences where we go through some grief and then we feel relieved of it experiences where we go through fear and then we're relieved from it and and then we have a growing sense of awareness of our desires as well so there are many positive feelings too mm -hmm. that we could engage unfortunately though for the majority of us they're not the first ones we engage yeah <laughs> you know that's the, the negative uh traumatic things that we engage because of our levels of resistance to emotion that are the first things we normally experience God's designed it, though, in such a way that if we chose to be humble instead and we chose to just feel the emotion instead, uh, the process would be very much more gentle on us. So the feeling of God's laws operating upon me would be sort of almost uh, welcomed. Well, it's not say? just that. It's also your emotions would be welcomed, yes. which is, you know, which is what is going to cause That's the law they... to be more gentle. Of, of course, because yeah. remember, the, the, the gentleness of the law has to match the resistance. So if, the, if we're more resistive, the law is less gentle. The more resistance, the less gentle. Mm -hmm. the more, 
it has to be because otherwise we won't recognize the problem. Yeah. Right. So, so if, imagine if, if the law, if we're really gentle to, or, or sensitive, sensitive yeah. to the emotion, now the law is gentle. It doesn't need to have large, big attraction events anymore. It's just a little attraction event, bang, yeah. it's triggered our emotion. Then it's done its job. And, and we go through the process, the emotion, and we come out the other end and we feel better. And we feel more joy and happiness in our life and we feel more content and we feel less suffering and less pain and and things in our body change and all sorts of things happen and this reinforces to us the the goodness the rightness mm -hmm. of doing this process mm -hmm. which then causes our desire to grow to do the process in more aspects of our life yeah so so it can be a very positive feeling process as well Yes, yeah, so that's that's so in summary, what it feels like as God's laws operate upon me to motivate my forgiveness mm -hmm. is that probably if we're already resisting forgiveness, it's going to feel quite painful at times and it's going to feel very challenging all the time. And, and painful if, in every respect, not just emotionally. Emotionally, physically, physically everything. And mm -hmm. productively and yep. in every way. And we're going to suffer. We'll suffer. We will suffer. Yeah, that's the design. That's by design. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're going to suffer due to our own choice. Yeah. It's not God choosing. It's like it's like us choosing to jump off a building. That's what we're really doing here. Yeah. If you think of the law of gravity like the law of laws of repentance and forgiveness, if you choose to break the law of gravity, it has penalty. And if you choose to break the law of repentance and forgiveness, it has penalty. And if you choose to break it intensely, with regard to gravity, you suffer. You, you hurt or yep. maim yourself or injure yourself or even die. And the same applies with the laws of repentance and forgiveness. If you choose to break it more intensely, you're going to suffer more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple mm -hmm. as that. It, it, the law is, is not, it doesn't make arbitrary decisions. It is what it is. It's just the law. Mm -hmm. And suffering is the result whenever we break a law. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to understand that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to suffer while we resist. Yes. And then, but lastly, you said that when and if we desire, our motivation starts to grow to actually forgive and engage forgiveness, then it can feel almost like we're working together with the law. We're we're welcoming the Which operation we of the law. We're saying, oh, thanks for bringing me that attraction. That's really where I'm wanting to head now. Yep. I can now get more insight and I can feel more about what happened. And, yep. and so then we can start to feel actually more almost... Um, hope. In, and hope and a sense of almost empowered in the process of course, so like yeah. wow i'm working I've together now, with god to i've now got deal some personal control over my life the law yes. isn't the only thing controlling me anymore yes. i can now work in harmony with this law and get some results some positive results yes. and not only that when you do it when you do actually forgive the, there's huge positive benefits not just at the end but also during the process Think benefits like I start to see what sin is. I start to recognize when people sin. I start to see what my response to specific sins are. Mm -hmm. I start to see what my addictions are. Mm -hmm. I start to see how I engage unloving behavior as a result of the things I don't forgive. Mm. So, so I, I now have a lot more knowledge about myself. Well, yes, and also I start to have knowledge about what is me and what is just the hurt Within. based sin that I've been holding on to that's not even my personality or nature. That's right. Yeah. And you or even I start... don't even like the things I thought I did. I'm just doing that to get other people's approval. It exactly. Hurt me all that's this what I was about to say. You just basically have, you now start to recognize your pure desires yes. rather than just acting only in your hurt, Yeah. which is a, which is a huge it's benefit to your life. So, so, so the feelings range from <laughs> terrible <clears throat> feelings of hatred, resentment, and other feelings such as that, yeah. right the way through to beautiful feelings of joy and happiness and my life's in control now and I've yeah. got some hope for the future and you feel quite positive and you get more faith. So your feelings can, can go from these very, very negative, huge amounts of grief and pain and suffering and emotions and other things 
uh, right the way through these beautiful feelings of happiness in yeah. the process of forgiving. Yes. <laughs> So it's and not, as the that's that's yeah. how it can feel that God's laws are operating upon me. Yeah, yeah. So, so we need to see that that if we're in the process of pain and suffering, then we're yet to be going through the process fully. Yeah. Into the process of the the joyful outcomes and also the joyful processes of knowing yourself more and discovering more about yourself and discovering more about your desires. All of those things now become possible once you forgive and you no longer act in these unhealed emotional states either. So you're also now becoming a more sin-free individual, mm. someone who perpetrates less damage and harm on the planet and to other people. And, and so there's so many positive benefits and feelings that come from that. So mm. we must emphasize that while there are a lot of feelings that are very hard to address, once we go through the process, there are also a lot of beautiful feelings that come about from forgiveness, mm -hmm. which not only are beautiful for ourselves, but also can be beautiful for others to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we move on from this point about what it feels like God's laws operating on me, there's a couple of things in our notes that we probably didn't get to cover correctly. Mm. So I'll just read some of them to you mm -hmm. and then perhaps you can explain sure. what it's all about. Yeah, sure. Okay. So you mentioned that people who are kind to me will point out to me and attempt to assist me to release the emotions I have inside me of hurt. Yes, and if they're truly kind yep. and truly knowledgeable, they will be focused on the truth, God's truth about the matter. They won't be focused on belittling you about it or any of those kind of things. They'll be truly kind. You know, they, they, they are trying to help you feel happier. That's how you know whether a person is being truly kind or not, mm -hmm. if they're trying to help you become happier. Now, some of them might not know what the underlying cause is of the problem, yep. but they'll at least be able to see that you definitely haven't forgiven a person, for example. Yeah. Right? But, but others who are more advanced than you, they'll be able to tell you what the cause of the problem is too. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to help you also release that cause um, through talking to you about it firstly and helping you become aware. Of course, they can't actually release the emotion, mm -hmm. but they can uh, help you become aware that the emotion is there and that you need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then conversely, People who are unkind will attempt to use control, manipulation, condescension, bribery and, in, and attack in order to benefit from my avoidance of forgiveness. Yes, now this is a very important thing to understand is that this is still the law of attraction working perfectly. But what happens is that when I choose to not forgive, so in other words, I'm refusing to forgive, I no longer can see the sin Right, I can't. While I refuse to forgive a sin, I'm not going to see the sin of another. Mm -hmm. So this means that I'm much more highly likely to accept that sin again. Right now, people who want to sin that way towards me, in other words, who want to hurt me, yep. will know that they will know that we, that I don't see the sin and that I will accept the sin. Mm -hmm. And so they will engage in behavior that continues to perpetrate further sin yep. towards me. So, so by choosing to not forgive, I'm really choosing to allow more people to hurt me the same way mm. that other people have already hurt me. Mm. Because I remain open to them treating me in the same way. Yes, so, but it is a law of attraction event too. It's there, this event occurs to show us that, whoa, I've still got this injury because I still keep getting the same kind of people treating me the same kind of way, mm. right? And this is a very informative thing for you. Yeah. Because once you know that, oh, wow, not only did my mother treat me that way, but now every woman that I meet treats me that way. Mm. Or, wow, not only did my father treat me that way, but every woman I meet now treats, or every father, every man I meet now treats me that way. Yeah. And that gives us an indication, of, oh, maybe, because they're all different people, maybe there's something constant in me mm -hmm. that causes them to think they can treat me this way. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that them treating that, you that way is God's 
you know, reward for you having that problem within yourself in the first place. But every person who's unkind will make will take advantage of your injuries. And this is what people do. They take advantage of your injuries if you choose to not forgive. Mm. So then can I just clarify about that? Because mm -hmm. this question was a lot about, well, it is how it feels, feels. How it feels for me as the laws are operating upon me. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to understand the difference between, uh, I think I grasp your point, but just to make it crystal clear, you're talking about the actions and behavior of people there. So the kind people and the unkind people, what the kind people will do and what the unkind people will do. Yep. Now, I understand that my soul the design of my soul, the very nature of my soul is governed by law. And so the things that I'm sensitive to and not sensitive to is dependent on what emotions I want to be sensitive to and not sensitive to. And so the treatment of others that I'm sensitive to and not sensitive to is governed by those, those laws. Now you're confusing me. <laughs> well, you I get don't get the, it. I don't get it. <laughs> if you get to the question, what's the question? The question is, how is the individual will of people and their decisions, mm -hmm. how is that related to God's laws operating upon me? Emotions are transmitted between people. You know that. Yes. So, so if I have an emotion where I will accept a certain emotion from you, you will have a higher intensity if you have an intention to deliver that emotion to me. You'll have a higher desire to do it because you'll know you'll get away with it. And that's just a normal consequence of the flow of emotion. In other words, if I'm, if I'm open, it's, it, it, it maybe it's a great way, this is a great way of putting it. If I've got a cup and it's empty and I put a lid on it and you try to pour water in it, the water's not going to go in the cup. Yeah. But if I open the lid of the cup, and then let you pour water in it, water will go in the cup, mm -hmm. right? Now let's say that water is emotion. Let's say it's an unloving one. Yep. If I've got a lid on it, no matter, you try, you might try to pour it in, but it's never gonna go in. So you're not gonna get the satisfaction of it going in, yep. are you? Yeah, I get that. Yep. Right? But I take the lid off, and now you will get the satisfaction of the emotion going into me. And that will give you some kind of feedback mechanism. It will make you feel better, usually. It makes you feel like, oh, you've accomplished your goal. Yeah. Abusive people want to accomplish their goal. Yeah. And what their goal is usually to make us feel something. Yes. Right? Now, if, I'm if, I, if I do not receive their abuse, right, then they won't feel like they've accomplished their goal. Mm -hmm. And it's highly likely they'll go off and do it some try to do it somewhere else. Yep. Because they know with me, they won't accomplish the goal. Yep. Does it make sense? As soon as, I, as soon as I put that cap over, which is processing forgiveness, puts the cap on. Mm -hmm. Because it identifies to me what the sin is, and it identifies to me that I should no longer allow it. Mm -hmm. So now, I was like putting a cap on my soul, if you like, my emotions, right? What, I, what I'll allow to enter me. What I will allow to enter me. Yeah. People who are unkind take advantage of other people. They take advantage of your injuries. Mm -hmm. If they know you will allow something, they will do what you will allow. Yeah. Right. And and in it's in some ways it's also similar to children who are being unkind. We'll do the same way. You see it a lot with children with their parents. Definitely. When a parent has an emotional injury where they are not that where they are, they are open, then the child will take advantage of that injury. Right? It's almost automatic for the child if the child is unkind or undeveloped. Yeah. Right? For an adult who's unkind, it's the same. They will take advantage of the injury. Now that is an operation of the law. So ha tell me how that's law-based. Because the, it's law-based because the law states that if you will allow something, then somebody can give it to you. Mm-hmm. If, if you I allow something, allow it's a something. desire. It, it, it's a desire where that is fulfilled. Yeah. It will be given to you. It, wh whatever you ask for, you will receive. Mm -hmm. So if I'm asking to be treated badly, I will be treated badly mm -hmm. by somebody, 
Mm -hmm. right? And the only place where that won't be possible is if I was way up in the celestial sphere somewhere, right? I was in the, I was completely perfected in love. Then of course, I would never have a feeling of wanting to be treated badly anyway. Mm. But let's say that I was living there in that place. Mm. I won't be treated badly by anybody who's, who's a good person. Mm -hmm. But I still attract people who are bad people treating me badly. In when I'm in the celestial heavens? Well, no, no, I'm yeah. using just an example yeah. of in the heavens. I see. Right? In the celestial heavens, I, as I said, I'm no longer open to being treated badly and nobody yeah. will treat me badly in the celestial heavens. But I can go down to the hells and somebody might try, but it's impossible for them because I'm not open to it. Right? Yeah. Now, the same principle applies on earth. You can't be treated badly and feel badly about it unless there's an openness mm -hmm. to feeling badly about it. Yeah. Right? And that's an operation of the law. Yes, thank you. That's In other words, if I close down the aspect of, you know, close down my openness to something, to some bad treatment, then it's highly likely that I'll be treated badly less. Mm. Right? And that's the case with all of God's laws. Mm. And, and that's the law in operation. So, so the beauty of this law operating in this way is, is, is many fold, but let's look at one of the reasons why it's a very good thing. One reason is that you can live in a terrible environment and still get an attraction that shows you you need to forgive. In a terrible environment? Yes. Wouldn't you receive a lot of things that would show you that you need to forgive if you live in a terrible environment? Of course. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. You can live in a terrible environment and still know you have to forgive. You can see I most see. people believe that if they live in a kind environment, that's when you know you have to forgive. But I'm saying, no, the reality is sooner or later, it will come to your attention, even in the most worst environment imaginable, that at some point you're going to have to forgive. Yeah, I guess I'm laughing because <laughs> I, I find it's more pronounced to me in environments. I live in a very kind environment living with you. Mm -hmm. And at times it's easy for me to skip over the fact that I need to forgive things because there's not many people in my day to day life treating me that badly. No, but it is easier to forgive things in this environment. It is definitely easier. Yes. yes. But my awareness. Because, uh, because the people around you, me yes. primarily, is going, I I'm supporting you. Go forgive. for it. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. supporting yeah. you. Forgive. I'm supporting yes. the process of emotional processing yes. Yes. and working your way through and forgiving. Yeah. Whereas you might be living in another environment where they're not supporting it. Yes. But what I'm saying is in another environment where they're not supporting it, you still are going to come aware that you need to forgive. Yes. Because of the way the law operates, you realize the damage to yourself mm. that occurs yeah. by not forgiving. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that's immaterial to the environment. Yeah. Right? You feel the damage to yourself. And this is, what, this is what I'm saying here, is that the people who are in kind, the, the feelings that happen obviously are going to be, the law is going to generate feelings in me that actually accept unkind behavior from people mm -hmm. to the point where I see the unkind behavior occurring regularly as a problem. As a problem. Yeah. And I now start seeing that I'm the common factor mm. encouraging this unkind behavior. Mm -hmm. And then I go through processes that cause me to go into forgiveness of the unkind behavior. Now, this has happened to me with many aspects, like, uh, you know, most of the time, as you know, I get treated quite badly yeah. until I deal with something and then I get treated better. Yeah. And, and it's very rare for me actually to be treated well before I deal with something because yeah. there's very few people on earth who want to treat me well. Yeah. And, so, and so what happens frequently, like, for example, with the women issue, I attracted more and more and more and more women treating me badly. Mm. Right? Until I became aware, oh wow, they're treating me badly. Mm -hmm. See, be before then I wasn't aware. Before then I wasn't aware that women were treating me bad. I'd just go along with the bad treatment. Mm. But now I'm aware. And by processing through forgiveness of those women, which I'm still doing, mm -hmm. by processing through forgiveness of those women, less and less women will treat me badly. Mm -hmm. right? They will feel less drawn to treat me badly is probably the better way to put it. Yes, and you're by saying the law. you're saying but also just to clarify you're saying 
because earlier you said just your allowance is your desire to be treated badly that's quite confronting i know we're confronting for some of our listeners mm -hmm. the allowance that i have because a lot of people i know want to feel look i allow it but it still hurts and i don't want it um I, frequently not the case yeah yeah and there, there's a lot of reasons why mm -hmm. We learned as children that that allowing bad treatment gets approval in some ways. Yeah. So what we end up with is a balancing act. We 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 allow bad behaviour on this hand, yes, to to get some what we think are good results on this hand. Yeah, you see. Yeah, and 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 so in a lot of ways we are supportive of the bad behaviour, not because of the bad behaviour itself, but because of the results it gives us on on another in another area of our life. Mm. And, and so, for example, a woman who's allowed to treat a man badly will often think the man's good. So, so he gets to feel he's good, allowing her to treat him badly right, under certain circumstances. So he, she might treat him badly in one area of his life, mm -hmm. but she basically says, oh, my husband's a good husband because I, he basically lets me do what I want, you know, and he basically treat, lets me treat him like I want. Yeah. And so that makes him a good husband. Mm -hmm. And so the husband then gets to feel things that from his childhood that he wants to feel in addiction. Yeah. And he doesn't recognize the sin of a woman treating him badly. Yes. And this is an example of the feelings involved here uh -huh. and the laws that govern those feelings. Yeah. So people who are unkind can attempt to use control, condescension, manipulation, bribery, attack in order to uh, benefit from me avoiding the emotional process of forgiveness yeah and that is uh that is allowed by the law that's allowed by the law to help me become uh, 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 cognizant and aware in a place where there's only bad people mm. or there's mostly bad people mm. and and so so the way that god's constructed the law is whether i live in a good environment or a bad environment yeah right where there's good kind people or bad unkind people, yeah. I will still become cognizant and aware of where I need to forgive. Yeah. And that's the result of that law. Yeah. Yeah. But it feels pretty bad because <laughs> it just feels like, oh, yeah, you, you, what happens is you, you're initially unaware and so you don't really know what's going on. And then you start developing awareness in this place. And then it's like everybody seems to want to hurt, hurt you. you the same way that you've already been hurt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that usually tells you you're on the right track, you know, that you're actually getting somewhere now. Yeah. You're becoming more aware that that's wrong. And now you've got to get to the state of humility towards the actual forgiving, forgiving emotion. You know, the emotions need to be released so you can forgive. And once you go through that, then all that stops. Yeah. <laughs> and that also then tells you you're, you did the right thing. <laughs> yeah. We we'll talk about the exact steps in forgiveness in a sure. later section, won't we? Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. But it was important to explain some of it there. It was just yeah, so that we understand sure. the process, if you like, that's involved. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we've covered a lot in what it feels like as the laws operate upon yeah. you to motivate Can I mention the next one because it's a little bit different as well, so, which is people who are unkind who attempt to utilise my lack of recognition of the sin of others in order to get me to do what they want. Yeah. Now, this is very important to understand too, is that when I don't see a sin, I allow it. Yeah. And that includes sins perpetrated towards me. So if I don't see that you, for example, have sinned towards me in a certain way, I will allow future sins of the same kind towards me in the same way. Now, people around me who are unkind will take advantage of that. They will go, oh, I can always get away with this with him. And they do. They, we, I allow it. I, I desire it almost mm -hmm. right? because of my condition. I'm allowing it. And they get away with it every time, every time. They're getting away with it every time. And this is to help enlighten me, to help me see, wow, this is happening all the time. And these people are taking advantage of it. And how unkind is it for them to take advantage of me mm. having this injury? It's very unkind. And that then makes me more sensitive to how sad I feel about that. And then I will hopefully go through the process of forgiveness mm. where i let go of that emotion of how sad i am about being attacked for having a weakness right that other people take advantage of and once i've come out of that 
I again will no longer, I will notice every single person who's trying to take advantage of me. Mm. 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 Which is fantastic because now you can make decisions. You can it's say, It's so good how you get sensitive to everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I find that perhaps the hardest part for me in many areas in becoming. In what way? Um, of recognizing the sin against myself. Yeah. Because it quite. It feels quite sad, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. There's a lot of sadness involved. Well, in what creates that resistance to recognising the sin against myself? Because sometimes I think it's my resistance to the sadness, but sometimes it's literally beyond, like, um, for example, I have the benefit of you or other people around me who are kind. You say, didn't you notice this thing? Or what I notice is about the way that people have treated you or mm. what you do with people. And, and I think... I don't even, I just thought that's normal. <laughs> well, this is the thing is that if we don't forgive, whatever we don't forgive, we will believe is normal. That's right. But in this process of forgiveness and the laws operating upon us, you're saying we have to move initially through a process of realising on the way to forgiveness, we have to realise, hey, that's not normal. Correct. And it's a t from what I've experienced thus far, it's an intellectual but crucially emotional process of coming to recognize that something is and let's say it's not normal it's not right it's not it's not it's, so much it's not loving I yeah you know most. because it because it, you know normalcy on the earth is very very different to normalcy from god's perspective so so yes we initially feel that it's okay yeah that 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 is what we expect mm -hmm. and and we it's standard it's behavior, standard behavior yeah. of treatment of yes. us yeah. personally is how we see it yeah. and then after a while we go hang on a sec even though it might even be even though every person on this planet is doing it it's not right it shouldn't it's not normal it's not god's definition of normal and this is what i had to go through in the first century every person on ever that i ever met treated me badly <laughs> and and it was very, very difficult to go through this process of coming and, and actually working my way through this feelings of forgiving everybody for their bad treatment of me, mm. recognizing the sin in every action and yet forgiving it. Mm. So sometimes I think, um, say for you in the first century, having a relationship with God established from a young age can assist you to feel God's feelings about things, which makes you infinitely more sensitive to, to what is loving and what is not, like just bam, well, yeah, straight away. When we talk about the conscience in a few sessions' time, I forget yeah. which, I think it's two sessions' two time. We're depends planning. on how long <laughs> it takes. <laughs> but um, you'll see that, you know, how, how this mechanism that God has of communicating truth with you, if you're sensitive, can be very very helpful in mm. engaging forgiveness and repentance mm. Mm. all right i'll leave i'll leave mm. what i was going to raise there till then i think that's probably mm. the best yeah yeah, yeah. so okay, so you when it comes satisfied. to the feelings we can see wow they're pretty you know there's a lot of pretty complex feelings there isn't there in the process of forgiveness really and of the operation of of the law of on the, the feelings law getting us to a point of wanting to forgive yeah there's quite a lot of yeah emotion yeah. <laughs> so you know this what it feels like as god's laws operate on us is what we're focusing on and wow you know it, it can feel very unfair sometimes uh particularly it's always fair of course but, yeah. but it feels unfair yeah um, everything god does is just but it feels often unjust and this is where we get stuck we often start feeling it's unjust and then we start getting resentful or hateful and then we start acting in ways that are unloving and then that perpetrates further damage to ourselves and others and that's that's an area of life that i feel that many of us get stuck in and, and so it's really important, I feel, for people to see, well, yes, God's laws are operating. And this is where, you know, at times I've had to go through and feel like, wow, you know, it just feels feeling really unjust at the moment. And you've got to let yourself feel that too, you know, how <laughs> unjust it is and, and, and how, how unjust it feels to, to go through these processes. It's not unjust and it's not, it's not what you feel at the end, mm -hmm. but, but going through it, it can feel that way. 
but humility demands that we go through those feelings mm. and still complete the process. Mm. Yeah, but it is, it's sometimes difficult. And this is what we wanted to say to people. It can be difficult, but the results are outstanding. <laughs> you know, they're, they're incredible results if you're willing to engage the difficult process. So let's, let's move on now okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to speeding up the process of forgiveness. So in our last section, we talked a lot about how God's laws sort of operate upon us mm -hmm. to, in, to motivate us, to create a motivation to actually engage with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it sort of sounds like, or it could be, it could sound as if God's laws sort of do all the work to get us to become motivated to forgive. Well, they do in a lot of ways, don't they? But, yeah. yeah it's you particularly bear in mind that most of the time at the beginning, we're very resistive <laughs> to the thing. You don't want to. Yeah. What about though, if, if I can see right now that there's issues in my life that I need to forgive, but I'm resisting them. Yeah. Are there things I can do to speed up that process of forgiveness or to to help to generate a motivation to like a sincere motivation to forgive within myself mm. what kinds of things can i do mm. so it's a good question isn't it well uh, as you know through your own experience mary you, you know that um everything to do with a lack of motivation is due to resistance and everything to do with the lack of desire is due to resistance and everything to do with not doing something is due to resistance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And whether that resistance be angry resistance or fear based resistance or, you know, belief systems or other things. And we'll talk about what they potentially are. But but generally, the principle of speeding up your process is this. Get rid of your resistance. <laughs> <laughs> so, so am I right to define uh, for our listeners? resistance as a lack of desire so it's a desire in the opposite direction would you say uh, yeah or a lack of desire but but, yes. but even a lack of desire is really just a desire in the opposite direction yeah all lack of desire lack of motivation you know uh, all comes from underlying resistances like fear and anger and other things like that so yeah. at the end of the day most almost all resistance is related to anger fear of some kind. Yeah. The key is to be a bit more specific, right? Yes. But, but the, the, the principle of speeding up any process of forgiveness is to address your resistance, mm. emotionally address it. It has to be emotionally addressed. Now, some resistances are just intellectual belief systems. Mm -hmm. So they are relatively easy to get rid of with mm. a bit of logic. You mm -hmm. know, you can present yourself with some logical truth about whether it's logical to do something or not do it. And that will dissipate any intellectual belief system. So the application of logic yes. will re help remove intellectual belief systems that are out of harmony with truth. So could we have an example? Is that putting you on the spot too much? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to pertain to forgiveness, but that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we, if we examine what logic, kind of for example, uh, here's, a, here's a very base logic. I should be able to punish a person who punishes me mm -hmm. in the same way they punished me. Yeah. So, so for example, they cut out my eye. Mm -hmm. I should be able to cut out theirs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is the whole concept, the, the Bible concept, in fact, uh, comes from the Old Testament of eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life yes. for a life. Yeah. Right. Now, most people on the planet have that viewpoint. Mm -hmm. It's not very logical. No. Because as we've discussed already in our in our introduction to both of these sessions, um, if everybody had the viewpoint, if you cut out my eye, I'll cut out yours, at the end of the day, where does it stop? Yeah. As soon as one person starts cutting out one eye, then it starts escalating. And then it's like, oh, you cut out my family's yeah. child's eye, so I'm going to cut out your child's eye. Yeah. And it just escalates from there and there. And it becomes like a monster yes. in itself. Yeah very logical mm -hmm. as a viewpoint mm -hmm. it's emotionally satisfying mm -hmm. in the addiction mm -hmm. of having these of having a, having rage satisfied but it's not logical so and if i've got that belief system intellectually only i can look at the logic and dissipate the belief system yeah of course a belief system like the one i just mentioned is not 
No, intellectually. intellectually. <laughs> so it's yeah. going to be a lot harder than just getting rid of an intellectual yeah. belief system in that case. Yeah. But there are some things where we just do have some intellectual belief systems that we have no real logical reason for having them. And no real emotional attachment to them. And no just, real yeah, emotional yeah. attachment to them. Yeah. And they're relatively easy to dissipate. Yeah. But they can cause resistance. Yeah. So, for example, an intellectual belief system that I'm scared of my emotions. Yeah. Now, you may not be scared of your emotions. Mm. You may have just been, you know, you may now just have an intellectual belief system come from observation, not from your own emotion. Yes. You may actually be quite happy to feel your own emotion. Yeah. But you just may have a system, belief system that goes, oh, other people are not that happy with feeling emotions and maybe feeling emotions is bad. And so I avoid it. Yeah. Telling yourself some logic about emotion will help mitigate that. Mm hmm. Now, of course, uh, most of our belief systems are not just intellectual, as yeah. I've pointed out, they're yeah. emotional. Yeah. And getting rid of emotional belief systems is where a lot of our resistance lies. Uh -huh. Now, an emotional belief system is, did God really create this process of forgiveness and repentance? Mm, is it real? Is it real? Is it actually going to benefit me to feel all that does it, hurt? Does it work? Yeah. I don't believe it does. Yeah. You know, I've never seen anybody do it. Mm -hmm. And most of us have probably never seen anybody do it our entire life. Yeah. And therefore we don't know the results of it, mm -hmm. but we assume that doing it is not going to get good results. Mm -hmm. Again, a lack of logic, just because nobody's ever done it and nobody's ever had good results because they haven't done it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that doing it is, is not going to give me good results. Good results. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is the way we think right, and yeah. feel. Getting rid of the emotional belief systems is a bit more difficult a lot more difficult because they are emotional and if I have some basic underlying beliefs about emotions that are faulty, I probably am not going to get rid of the belief systems. Mm. But they cause resistance mm. to repentance and forgiveness and God's laws are going to try to expose that. Now, we, this question was all about resistance and speeding up the process. Yeah. Obviously, if I purposefully get rid of my resistances, yeah or purposefully attempt to ignore as much as possible of my resistances, mm. that's going to help me. Ignore as much of my yeah, resistances? Yeah, yeah. In other words, would I do that? what I mean by that is your resistances scream at you. Yes. They do. They tell you, you've got to go and do this. You've yeah. got to go and do it. You know, yeah. that's what your resistances You'll never do. Survive. You'll never survive. If it's you, the end of the world. Not, yeah, this if is what your resistance tells you. Ignore it. Yeah. That's just a little fear voice in the background yes. screaming at you. That's all yeah. that is. Yeah. You can ignore it yes. and still act in harmony with some faith and, mm. some, and the truth that you've heard. Yeah. Of course, eventually you need to process through why that little voice is screaming at you because that's an emotional belief system that needs to be released. Yeah. But there's also some belief systems about should you listen to your fear? Mm. Should you listen to your anger? These are belief systems that you can confront. Yeah. You shouldn't listen to your fear or your anger if you really want to progress. Mm -hmm. right? They just stop you from progressing. So stop listening to them. Stop believing them. Feel them. Yeah. There's a difference between feeling them and believing them. Right? Yeah. You need to stop accepting the premise of these screaming voices in your background mm -hmm. telling you that doing the good thing is a bad thing. Yes, because while we accept the premise of the negative, of the fear-based emotion, mm -hmm. we ex we live in it. Yes. We accept its messages and, and that emotion. And we act upon it. We act upon it. And that emotion is never released from us because we're, we're actually acting in harmony with it. We have to act in opposition with fear in exactly. order for it to come out of us. So exactly. in order to remove the emotional resistance, you are saying we have to ignore what it's saying to us, act in disharmony with it, and, feel, and in that process, the emotional resistance will leave us. Well, no, we need to choose to feel the emotion yeah, before it will release, release yes. from us. Obviously, we need to do that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But if there's a voice in the background saying, don't feel it, don't feel it, you say, blow you, I'm feeling it, <laughs> right? Yes. Even though I feel scared about feeling it, whatever, I'm just still going to choose to feel it, Yeah. right? We can make choices like that. We are capable of making choices like that. We yeah. don't have to listen to the screaming negative voices in the background screaming at us that something that's good is bad. Mm -hmm. Like we need to see the logic. If something is good, 
such as forgiving is a good thing. Yeah. Anybody who would ever hear about the principle of forgiveness would say, it's a good thing to forgive somebody, yeah. right? Then why do we think there's going to be bad consequences for doing good things all the time? Yeah. There's got to be a problem with that yeah. screaming voice who yes. believes that yeah. <laughs> in the background, right? Yeah. So, so with a lot of our emotional belief systems, the way we need to treat them is that we are going to feel them. We are not going to listen to them. <laughs> we are going to feel them. Yeah. <laughs> not listen to them. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The end. And, and, yeah. and the trouble is that for most people is they listen to them yeah. and don't feel them. They do the opposite. Yes. They do the opposite. They, yeah. they, they listen to all of their emotional belief systems and then they choose to not feel their cause. Yeah. Not feel why they're there. Mm -hmm. Right. So we need to do the opposite of that if yes. we're truly going to progress. Now, th the question was about speeding up the process. Well, you can see that if you choose to listen to your false belief systems, whether they're emotional or intellectual, then you're going to slow down your progress. Mm. Right, you can see that quite mm -hmm. clearly. So obviously, if you want to speed up your progress, you do the opposite of that. You choose to no longer listen, but feel your emotional belief systems. Yeah. and your intellectual belief systems. Yeah. So these are two things that you can do mm -hmm. that will greatly assist yeah. the process and speed up your process. Speed up. Yep. So, okay, do you want, let's have a look at some of the other sure, things that sure. we listed. Um, so we are going to... One of the things that creates resistance to this process of forgiveness is pressure from others that's, who support me to remain unforgiving since they're in a similar situation to me. So. Yes, so he, let's say an example of that might be like you're a woman and you've, you, you know, your man's been you know, yelling at you mm -hmm. all day, a few days, and, and so you go and talk to all the other women and they say, yeah, he's a bastard and he's terrible and you should leave him and you yeah. don't forgive him. Yes. You leave him, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the answer. You, 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 you get you rid of punish him, him you punish way. him out of your life now yeah now why are they saying all these things it's because they are personally resistive to forgiveness exactly and yeah. they want you to do that yes. <laughs> they yeah. support you doing that yes. <laughs> now so then the question becomes what do we do with that kind of resistance yes because uh, this kind of resistance hurt, hurts us it, it tells us that we shouldn't forgive and it's it's so incredibly prevalent, not just with women, but with oh, men, men and, and with women. different societal groups against each other. Yeah, it makes no difference. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's pervasive throughout human yes. society. This yeah. whole looking for agreement, commiseration, commiserating with a lack of forgiveness, mm -hmm. looking for agreement to not forgive from the rest of society. You know, you and I have seen recently a thing where a, a woman had forgiven a man for raping her. Yes. And and all of the other women who had not been raped, by the way. Yes told her that she'd done the wrong thing. Yes. She was doing a dangerous thing and Exactly. And, and they were even angry with her. Yes. In order to force her back into a position that they're in. Yeah. Now now what do you do with associates like that? Well, you don't have them as associates. Exactly. You've yeah. got to at some point choose to no longer have commiserative associates who who agree with you doing the wrong thing yeah. all the time yeah you need to spend your time with people who think you should be doing the right thing instead yeah. <laughs> now that is a choice too mm -hmm. just like the other was a choice to ignore your false screaming. belief emotions and yeah. screaming background you yes. know voices in your head yeah. a choice to ignore them or follow them this is now another choice that we need to make if we're going to speed up our process mm -hmm. we make the choice to, to, to get rid of any person in our life, and I don't mean permanently, I just yeah. mean for the time when I'm dealing with a specific yes. problem, get rid of the people in my life who tell me that I shouldn't deal with the problem yeah. Yeah. because they're not helping me deal with the problem. No. They're being unloving to me yeah. and they're not supporting my loving actions. Yes. That's a natural consequence, isn't it, of that kind of decision. Mm -hmm. Now, if I surround myself with commiserative people who say and agree with me not being forgiving, yeah. obviously my personal level of resistance is going to be high, heightened and it's, therefore my whole process of forgiveness will slow down. Yeah, mm. it's heightened, isn't it? But I would also have to look at that as an attraction, wouldn't I? Of course. To reflect where my current motivation is. Correct. It tells me that my motivation is obviously bad. Yeah. 
because otherwise I wouldn't be surrounding myself with people who want who, who want me to be unforgiving. Yeah. And instead I'd be surrounding myself with people who want me to be forgiving. Yeah. Like yeah. so obviously, you know, birds of a feather do flock together as the saying yes. goes. The law of attraction works perfectly. If I'm attracted to a bunch of people who all say you should not forgive, then have, have I forgiven or do have, I really am I sincere about this person? Well, that, that's a question goodness. I need to ask. Yeah. However, if you're the first person who's ever forgiven somebody for something or a very unusual person who has forgiven yeah. somebody for something, you are automatically surrounded yeah. by pretty much everybody around you yeah. who disagrees with your action. Yeah. And that being the case, you would have to know that you're doing the right thing yeah. and you'd have to hold on to the morality and ethics of doing the right thing. Yes. Even if everyone around you disagrees. Yeah. 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 So in the but, case of this woman on the panel getting yes. attacked for forgiving her rapist, her, you know, she's she's engaged the process through her teaching, mm -hmm. uh, and and the attack of the other women is unwarranted and unjustified mm -hmm. and also not very uh, kind or loving yeah. to to her. Nor does it bespoke any kind of uh, awareness on their part, mm -hmm. um, and so she would have to recognise the truth of all of that yeah. and stay firm to her decision. Yeah. So really, a part of this is. Um, not only initially it's becoming aware of our associates and their attitude towards forgiveness and recognizing and if they're supportive if they're supportive or not of forgiveness and if i want to grow my motivation to forgive i'm certainly going to stop heeding mm. the the uh influences and the advice of people who have no sincere desire to forgive certainly yeah. and and if a person's supportive we need to see the truth and that truth is they themselves are unwilling to forgive that same thing. Yeah, if they're supportive of my lack of forgiveness, Correct. you mean? Yes. They yeah. themselves are uh, unwilling to forgive in the same thing. Yeah. So, so we need to see the truth. Yes. That that they are demonstrating their own unwillingness. Yes. By supporting me in mine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, if you want to surround yourself with people who are unwilling to deal with something that is good, mm -hmm. to actually become good people then my suggestion to you is that you've got a problem of obviously feeling like you don't really want to become good either. Yeah. And that's yeah. something that needs to be addressed, obviously, yeah. if you yeah. truly want to speed up the process of forgiving. Yes. Mm. All right, let's look at another kind of pressure then. Mm. So we can encounter pressures f from other people wanting me to remain unforgiving because basically when I'm unforgiving, I keep allowing their terrible treatment of me yes. or other people. T I, I don't, something I commonly notice is that I don't upset the apple cart in the family or the, it, by, there can be a lot of pressure to not expose a problem, say, from a mother not wanting her daughter to expose a problem with the father because, because it'll uh, interfere with the whole dynamic of the way the family is running right now. And she doesn't want that to change, so she's pressuring me to not actually confront the hurt that was done, mm. and so on. So, in other words, people around you benefit from you staying in your state you're in, yeah. the unloving state you're in. Yeah. And these are all obviously unkind people as well. Yeah. Who, who, if they benefit personally, then it's not a real benefit. It's a, yeah. it's a feeling that they benefit. Yeah. Um, and if they are taking advantage of you being in an unloving state. Mm then obviously they're not very nice people yeah. in the first place. And, and that needs to be addressed. It happens regularly with families, of course, mm. where mm. one person starts to upset the apple cart, as the saying goes, and all of a sudden everyone in the family is attacking them because none of them want that person to change. Mm -hmm. Because what that person does is support a whole heap of unloving behaviour occurring in the family. And by to going through the process of forgiving, they'll recognise its unloving behaviour, they'll no longer support it, and therefore they'll be in disagreement with it, yeah. and that's going to cause a lot of problems down the track for the other people. That's what they think. That's what they think. Obviously not true, yeah. because obviously any improvement in love is going to improve the love in the family, but that's not how people see it. People in error wish to fight for their error. Mm. And, and people who want to manipulate you want you to allow yourself to be manipulated mm -hmm. and so they will put that pressure on you mm. Mm. it's an interesting paradox isn't it or a seeming paradox because often um even amongst couples 
where one party is harming the other, they can actually resist the person who they've harmed going through the true process of forgiveness because in that process, and this is what most people, most people think that forgiveness means acceptance, but actually forgiveness, and we'll talk in detail about this mm. as we go through the series, but mm. forgiveness actually means uh, no, as you just stated, recognition that that treatment is not on. Yes, and I no longer accept the sin as being right. I have to do that before I experience the pain of it. Correct. And it's only through the experience of the pain of it that I forgive. So I find it interesting we know couples where the there's huge issues of injustice that happened between the two. Mm -hmm. And yet they actively oppose each other going through the process of forgiving the other. Usually one wants to engage it more than the other. And the other one is fighting them, even though the person who's been harmed going through that process of releasing that harm will mean they actually love the person more, but they don't want to confront their own sin, which will wow. happen if that person no longer accepts that treatment. They'll be more confronted with their sin. So they don't want that to happen. So they're actually oppose people forgiving them yes yes and uh and there's many reasons for that you know one reason of course is that when you forgive somebody you do recognize their sin mm. and for the other person who did the sin that's very confronting yeah because because uh, now what they thought they could get away with they're now seeing the other person won't let them get away mm. with anymore so that's a very confronting thing to put that person through, you see. And, yeah. and what we've found in many cases is that a couple will come, we'll have a discussion with a couple, we'll point out the injuries of each towards the other. And in the end, both of those, that couple, instead of going through any of their injuries, they'll just get angry with me for mm. pointing them out. <laughs> <laughs> After they ask. Yeah. And, and, and many of them have stayed angry with me. And some of them have even died angry. Yeah. Uh, with me as a result of just one couple session yes where you know just an informal thing where people ask oh what do you think is going on here or there and uh, and pointing out a sin when you don't accept it has a very powerful effect mm -hmm. on people mm -hmm. and and if they're resistive man it can it it, it can polarize, polarize them so them. rapidly yeah. that after that moment they will never you know you'll never see them again yeah you know that's that's how much resistance there is on the planet. And that's why most people's process of forgiveness is very slow. Yeah, yeah. Because they are in codependent addiction with the sin. Yeah. They want the sin mm. one way or the other. Mm. Yep. So what do, how do we speed up our process of forgiveness when we are encountering this kind of pressure? Well, this kind of pressure is very insidious and it's mm -hmm. very damaging. It's also very unloving. Mm. And my suggestion would be remove the unloving person from your life until such a time as you've forgiven them completely. Yeah. And then after that time, it's highly unlikely they'll remove themselves from your life. It's highly likely they won't want to come back into your life. Yeah, because yeah. you will recognise their sin yeah. and they won't want to recognise their sin. Yeah, until they make a personal shift themselves. Yes, but it, even if even if that's married couple, that's what you need to do. Yeah, but by the workings of God's laws and just basic logic, it seems clear to me that say it's me, say I recognise the sin against me, that's going to create the greatest potential or a heightened potential for the person who's harmed me to actually recognise their sin and start to engage their own process of. Repentance. Repentance and positive change mm, that's right. than, than when I just accept it and when yeah, obviously I if you try to help them see it by talking and all these things. Yeah, if you, if you accept, emotionally accept their sin, you're basically saying to them that it's okay they sin. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Yeah. And, and by saying to them it's okay they sin, it's highly likely you are going to encourage them to sin more. Mm. So, so it's very uh, illogical, in fact. To, to not go through the process of forgiveness. Yeah. Because when you, go th when you don't go through the process of forgiveness, you're basically enabling further unloving behaviour on the part of other people towards yourself. Yes. And, and, and globally. And towards others. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So it's a very powerful thing to forgive because it has a, a big effect on yourself. Obviously, mm. it gets rid of a lot of personal 
uh, things that have been guiding your life for, for years in the past and now those things don't guide your life anymore so now you're much happier and everything but but it also has a very powerful effect on the person who's per perpetrating the behavior as we'll talk about in, uh, yeah. in later sessions yes mm. yeah yeah okay a uh, third type of pressure we've got listed here is spirit pressure yes so people who've already passed mm -hmm. and they have a similar level of resistance to a certain issue where they've been harmed in a similar way to, to which I have been. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do it, mm -hmm. uh, then they don't want me to do it because mm -hmm. me doing it's going to confront their their potential to do it. And Well, it, again, it's, it fits into the two behaviours, doesn't it? Either they're supporting me or they're liking it that I yeah, that I don't. don't forgive. Yes. Um, you know, they could be supporting or commiserating with me, not forgiving, or they could be supporting me because they actually benefit personally from yes. me not forgiving. So it's exactly the same as people on earth, really. But it's important to point out the influence because a lot of people don't realise a lot of the, vo the things that pop into their head, you know, the thoughts that pop in their head about, you know, that generate a lack of faith about the process of yeah. forgiveness that that are not true things that are not true not god's truth about forgiveness get said to them over and over again and eventually they believe them and and not understanding where the sources of that information are because they can't see them they sort of think oh it's maybe just a voice in my own head it's my own feelings or whatever and you've got to be very careful of that so how 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 can we deal with this kind of resistance in order to you know forgive more rapidly well it's much more difficult than dealing with the resistance from people on earth because you can't see it and they're going to be attracted to you until you forgive mm -hmm. so until you go through the process until your motivation grows yes or until your um until the way in which you deal with them is addressed mm. so so this gets back to the way in which you deal with unloving people around you. Mm -hmm. Do you remain having them in your life? Do you continue to listen to them? Or do you stop having them in your life and stop listening to them? Now, if a spirit is no longer heard or listened to, yeah. then he's going to go away just like a person on earth will. So it's, it's very similar to what you said when you were speaking about our emotional belief systems that create resistance. It's sort of like letting these things scream in the background and still making the loving choice, still doing the thing yeah. that we are convinced is, is loving and is good. loving and correct. Yeah. And th this is going to uh, slowly dissipate the amount of influence these people are able to have upon you. Yes. And whether they're invisible or visible, yes. very, after a while makes no difference to you. Yeah. You know, they they have no impact after a while because you're no longer listening to them. You, you're acting morally and ethically. You know you're doing the right thing. You know it's God's way. You know that God's laws encourage it. And so you act in harmony with what you know, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what kind of pressure you receive to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that's about having a backbone <laughs> and having some level of morality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, another another source of resistance yep. is refusing to accept God's truth about emotion. Yes, a big uh, area of resistance for a lot of people, I feel. You see, when God's truth about emotion is all emotion needs to be felt to be released. Mm -hmm. That's simply God's truth. And God's truth, God's truth is that God designed children to do this process naturally, and we've learnt to not do it naturally. Yeah. Um, Adults nowadays have huge fears associated with emotion. Almost every movie you see, there's when a person needs to cry, they don't. Yes. When a person needs to feel something, they don't. When yeah. a person, often they then go and act. Yes. In a way. In that, an angry or in, vengeful way. To... Which shows they haven't felt something. Yes. Right? And yeah. that's applauded. Yes. Right? And so we see it's in society, this whole concept, this false belief system that uh, that society has that they all believe is real and true that feeling emotions is the worst possible thing you can do mm -hmm. in fact what in western society you know the best thing to do is find a pill when you have an emotion you yeah. know this is yeah. why we have such a large variety of antidepressants and other other drugs to suppress emotion yeah right because we don't want to feel emotion that's our attraction mm -hmm. demonstrating we don't want to feel emotion it's a terrible, terrible untruth, and and it's going to have, and it does have huge negative effects on everybody's life on the planet, and and we've got to stop telling ourselves the untruth. Yeah, we've got to stop telling ourselves 
what you know what the world is telling us about emotion and we need to start telling us what is god's truth about emotion which is easily seen in a child yeah and that is a child as soon as it's born cries and it's obviously got emotions to feel yeah. <laughs> We yeah. need to learn to do the same whenever we have emotions to feel rather than acting out the emotions and damaging other people with them. Yeah. Mm. So making that shift is going to lessen our resistance, oh, create gonna, more motivation to forgive. It's going to have a huge impact on speeding up our process of yes. forgiveness. Yes. It, just that one thing. Yes. Yes. And then our final thing we listed, there's many more we could list, but of the course. final thing that we listed today was that <clears throat> refusing to have faith in God's truth about emotion. So this is very similar to what you said. Yeah, now there's a difference between God's truth about emotion and then me having faith in it. Yes. Me having faith in it is right. Uh, even though I don't, I, you know, I've not done it yet, mm -hmm. I need to believe mm -hmm. that God's truth about emotion is the truth. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't feel drawn into doing it. Mm -hmm. And and this is where faith becomes such a key uh, tool in our arsenal of de dealing with any emotion, let alone emotions relating to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. But faith is something that we know to be true, isn't it? It's it's really the knowledge of things. Or even can be something we suspect to be true. Yes. And, and it sounds like it might be true. And we can, what I notice is, when we have a desire to build faith, we see evidence around us that whatever we want to have faith in, pretty much we find evidence for. <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't agree we? with that. If, there's, if we want to have faith in something false, we usually don't find evidence for it. No, but we can tell ourselves we do, don't we, I suppose? Well, but, I think that's a state of delusion, though, yes. which is very different. You know, obviously being delusional and, and in denial is not going to speed up no, your process no, of no. forgiveness either. But, but where I was headed was we can see the changes in other people who do feel emotion. And of course. And that if, can help us with If we're faith. honest. If we really want to exactly honestly assess. And assuming they actually feel the a actual emotion, yeah. the causal emotion. Yeah, yeah, people who have felt the causal emotion, you usually can feel it yes. and you see the changes in their life, yeah. which are quite significant. Yeah. So this is this should give us faith yeah. that it's possible for us to do the same. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. So just to summarise then, the things that we can do so I can see, oh my gosh, I've got this stuff to forgive. Uh, currently, I'm not engaging with forgiveness. I'm not sure that I really have a strong motivation to, but I can see it would be a good way to go. Um, what can I do? Get rid of your resistance yes. to forgiveness. So it doesn't that's, matter. We can list, there's more than what we've listed, and yes. I don't even think we need to worry about listing them. Yeah. The main thing to remember is if, if, if I am not forgiving, mm -hmm. then I am in a state where I'm resistant to forgiving. Yep. I need to, if I want to speed up the process of forgiveness and receive the benefits of mm -hmm. forgiveness, I need to get rid of my resistances. Yes. I need to sit down and make a my own list. Of what, why, why am I why resisting? Am I resisting? What, why what don't are, I want What are to? all my yeah. beliefs? What are, you know, what are, what are my yeah. associates telling me? Yeah. All these things, I need to just make my own list. Yes. All, listing all of my resistances to forgiveness. Because if I don't do that, then I'm going to be very slow forgiving. And in fact, I'll be, I'll be grudgingly mm -hmm. drawn through the compensatory effects of the law of compensation, which we'll talk about, I think it's in the next discussion or two. Next, next two, discussion. Two, two, from <coughs> two time from now. Yeah. We'll be able to see how the law of compensation will work. And if we're grudging, it's going to have a long, laborious, very, very painful and a lot of pain and suffering process where eventually we forgive anyway. Yeah. So what's the point of going through a long, drawn-out, long-winded, pain, painful process that causes us to suffer for years and years and years when we could just get rid of some resistances and go through the process in a year or two? Yeah. <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> well, there's, there's no, con no contest really there. No, there? not really. If we're thinking logical, yeah. it makes sense yeah. to stop the grudging process and, and start looking at all the resistances we have that cause us to have a begrudging process yeah. and do it with desire. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Mm. Fantastic. <laughs>